North Yungus Road in Bolivia is one of the most picturesque and most hazardous roads in the world. Just imagine biking along a cliff trail at a mind-numbing height, overlooking the lush Bolivian jungle and misty mountains at a distance. What a view! But as soon as you realize you're riding on a 10-foot-wide stretch of road, some of which isn't even paved, you might get skin crawls. And for a good reason. Over 200 folks tumble to their demise each year on this devious mountain climb. And the absence of any guardrail doesn't help at all. Now, if you're more into walking, consider the Husseini Bridge in Pakistan. It's officially the most dangerous hanging bridge in the world, but hardly the only one in the country. It's a long and nerve-wracking traverse over Lake Borat, with many planks of the bridge missing and the whole construction creaking ominously in the wind. Still, the place has become a major tourist attraction, although the old and broken bridge visible nearby only adds to the impression that you're inevitably going to fall to a screaming end. Well, at least you can be thankful that the lake beneath is not Lake Natron in Tanzania. If you fall into water, you still have a chance of survival. If you fall into the waters of Natron, not so much. The pH levels here are a skin-melting 10.5. What passes for water is more like an alkaline soup. No wonder this place is so peaceful. Pretty much nothing wants to live here. And yet, flocks of flamingos come to Lake Natron to breed every few seasons, and it becomes a white-pink paradise for the period. Positively. Which can't be said about the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia. Despite its beautiful, otherworldly landscape, it's perhaps the loneliest place on Earth. Yellow, orange, and green mounds are made of salt, sulfur, and iron, creating views like nowhere else on the planet. Yet the combination of temperature and toxic minerals makes this place absolutely unlivable. Researchers coming here haven't found even microscopic life in this valley. Really, like another planet. Beautiful and desolate. On the other hand, there's an island that's bubbling with life, yet still you don't want to be there. It's called Snake Island, and the name says it all. It's chock full of snakes. In fact, there are so many of them, especially the venomous varieties, that Brazil has forbidden access to the island to any and all visitors. But even if it wasn't closed off, not many would be brave enough to go to a place where a single step offshore could land you a venomous bite. Now, I'll bet that fly geyser in the middle of the Nevada desert was created partly because humans became jealous of that. This place had been just another bit of desert until 1916, people came here to drill a water well. They quickly saw the error of their ways, though. The water came out boiling hot and unfit for drinking. Fifty years later, there was another attempt, but the same thing happened. We don't learn, do we? Anyway, hot water never stops spewing from under the ground. And today, we have a massive geyser cluster colored in shades of red, orange, and yellow. Now, I'd say let's take a break from things that could bite, burn, or crush you and take a walk in a serene forest. We're in Japan, and it's Sagano Bamboo Forest, a marvelous natural park where you can't help but hush your voice and just look. And listen, too because the sound of the wind in the bamboo trees is the first ever officially recognized soundscape. All the more surprising to find such a place just half an hour's ride from Kyoto, one of the busiest cities in the country. Take a deep breath of fresh air now. You're gonna need it. We're going underwater. Behold the Great Blue Hole, apparently named by Captain Obvious. It's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Located off the coast of Belize, this giant sinkhole is a massive tourist attraction, especially popular among divers. It's actually a whole cave system, and they say it gets weirder and more picturesque the deeper you dive. Beware, though, it's popular among sharks, too, and both bull sharks and hammerheads have been spotted here more than once. Here, have a towel and prepare for some barbecue. The Darvasa gas crater is waiting. A huge hole again, this time in the ground and burning. Over 50 years ago, geologists found this spot in Turkmenia, Central Asia, and were quite a bit alarmed. There was an enormous deposit of methane, a highly flammable gas, underground. 
they set it on fire to prevent the gas from spreading, and since then, the holes kept burning. It's over 200 feet across and 100 feet deep, and no one knows when it'll finally run out of fuel. Is it too hot again? Well, let's have a little swim with jellyfish then. Jellyfish Lake on one of the rock islands in Palau is perfectly described by its name. In 2005, there were about 30 million of these creatures here. Although today only 700,000 of them remain, their number is growing and tourists can actually swim with them. Until they get stung, that is. Okay, kidding, these jellyfish don't have stingers, so it's safe. Until they decide to grow stingers, of course. From the depths, we're going even deeper. The Gomantong Caves are our next stop. The cave system on the island of Borneo could have been Batman's hideout, given how many bats live there. At night, these nocturnal animals fly out of the cave in the thousands, making you wonder why you're still there watching it. But if you're brave enough to go inside the cave, you can truly marvel at the variety given to us by nature. Because there, on the floor and walls of the cave, lie tons of bat droppings, giving food and home to millions of cockroaches, parasites, and giant centipedes. Wondrous. Okay, I'm out of here. Now, if you're as easy to get away as I am, here's a place to go. Medidi National Park in Bolivia. It's one of the largest protected areas in South America and is home to an immense variety of animals, birds, and insects. I could do without the mosquitoes, but it's still among the few places where you could see wild macaws, monkeys, capybaras, and dozens of other creatures. Still, it's better to be careful because wild animals aren't always happy to see you, and there are known cases of attacks on tourists. Ever wanted to feel like Frodo Baggins in Middle Earth? Here's your chance! In Iceland, there's a slumbering volcano named Thrigúka Gegurth that welcomes guests to a tea party. Now, don't confuse this with another infamous Icelandic volcano, Eyjafjallajökull. Yeah, it's easy to mix them up, they sound so similar. Here, tourists are actually ushered down into the volcano and spend close to an hour inside, looking at the magmatic landscape. They say Thrinuka Gegur can't wake up all of a sudden, but who knows? Don't forget to bring the Ring of Power just in case. From the lowest dungeon to the highest peak, and here we are at Mount Hua in China. It's called the most dangerous hike in the world for a reason. It's high, it's crazy scary, and it's a hike. At the height of 7,000 feet, which already makes me reconsider, there are several wooden planks nailed to the sheer wall of the mountain. When you get to the start of the hike, you put on safety gear and realize there's no turning back. You have to walk all the way. And then back! But if you're lucky, you'll see a crowd of hundreds of tourists and decide not to spend hours waiting for your turn. Finally, to really creep you out, I'm taking you to Pripyat in Ukraine. If you watch the TV show Chernobyl, you probably know what happened in this area. If you didn't see it, well, don't have a meltdown. Much of the town is still off-limits for visitors, but there are already guided tours around the place. As haunting as it is, the landscape has some magnetic force. The silence makes you keep as quiet as you can. Also, you can see with your own eyes what happens when people abandon a whole city. Nature takes back what once belonged to it. Creeping vines along the walls and lampposts, trees and bushes sprouting from under concrete. And the main attraction in this desolate place is the rusty old Ferris wheel. That sure shivers my timbers.